Today, we're going to be reviewing the Richter S9 electric scooter, which is Richter's high performance commuter scooter with removable battery. So Richter is a short distance transportation company that was established in 2014, and they specialize in electric scooters, e-bikes, and electric motorcycles. They actually have over 300 national patents, and they're now entering to the US market with three scooter models, and we're testing the long range model, the S9. So in this video, I'm going to go over the assembly process, go in depth on the features and specs, do an acceleration test, a braking test, a range test, and review how it rides. So let's get to it. The S9 comes in your standard scooter shipping box, but it is pretty heavy. So make sure to be careful when moving, and if possible, have someone help you move it. After opening, the scooter was assembled about 90%. All you have to do is remove all the packing foam and zip ties, then attach the handlebars with the six bolts. Included in the box with the necessary tools and instruction manual. The whole process only took me about five to 10 minutes, with most of my time being spent on cutting off the zip ties. And this by far is one of the easiest scooters that I've ever had to put together. So you should have no problem putting together by yourself, regardless of your mechanical skill level. And when I went through the scooter, all the bolts were tight, all the welds were nice, the brakes felt great, and it powered up no problem. So the S9 is powered by 500 watt brushless rear hub motor and has three speed settings. Eco, which has a top speed of six miles per hour, D, which has a top speed of 10 miles per hour, and S, which has a top speed of 15 and a half miles an hour. So from the factory, the top speed of the scooter is 15 half miles per hour, but you can unlock the scooter through Richter's app and you can increase the speed all the way up to 25 miles per hour. The battery is a removable 36 volt, 15.6 amp hour lithium ion battery that's stored inside the deck and has a claim range of up to 40 miles on a single charge. And since it's such a big battery, the estimated charging time from empty is about five to six hours. The S9 comes with a powerful dual disc braking system with the right lever activating the front brake and the left lever powering the rear brake. The tires are 10 inch air filled pneumatic tires and to help out with ride comfort, there's a front fork and dual rear shocks that do a really good job of keeping the ride smooth. For safety and increased visibility, there's a headlight, a tail light, a bell, and a feature I've never seen on any electric scooter I've ever tested before, turn signals. To turn on the scooter, you hold down the power button for three seconds. To go in between different drive modes, click the button once, and to turn on the lights, you double click the button. And on the left side of the handlebars are the turn signals. And what's pretty cool is that when you turn on the turn signals, the display lets you know that they're on, so you just don't forget to turn them off when you complete your turn or lane change. So the S9 has a length of 45 inches, a wheelbase of 37 inches, handlebar height from the ground, 46 inches, handlebar height from the deck, 38 inches, handlebar width, 22 inches, deck length, 24 inches, deck width, 7.75 inches, deck height from the ground, 8 inches, ground clearance, 4.5 inches, and a weight of 54 pounds. And folding the scooter is super easy. All you have to do is unhook the handlebar post, fold, and insert into the hook on the rear fender. So for the acceleration test, I want to check the acceleration for each of the two top speed levels, since the first level only goes to 6 miles per hour. For the second speed level, the scooter got up to top speed of 10 miles an hour and 3.79 seconds. And since the scooter is pretty fast, I decided to see how fast it go to 20 miles an hour. Sport setting and go. 15, 20, which it did in a very impressive 8.59 seconds. The results of the acceleration test is that the Richter S9 went 0 to 10 miles per hour in 3.79 seconds and 0 to 20 miles an hour in 8.59 seconds. And just in case you're wondering, it did do 0 to 15 half miles per hour in 4.6 seconds. And I must say, I was pretty impressed by the acceleration of the scooter. It felt fast and smooth. Next, I tested out the braking distance for the two top speed levels. First was from 15 half miles an hour, which is the factory top speed, which the S9 did in an impressive 12 and a half feet. After this, I want to see what it would do from the unlocked top speed of 25 miles an hour, and the S9 stopped in 22 and a half feet. 
I have to say that I was blown away by the braking performance of this scooter. Not only because of its stopping distance, but just also how stable it was under braking. I've had some scooters I've tested before that they skid a lot, or they get a little sideways when braking, but not the S9. It was stable, powerful, and very, very impressive. Especially considering this scooter weighs over 50 pounds. And since this is labeled as a commuting scooter, other than power and comfort, one of the most important features to me is the range. So Richard claims that the S9 has an estimated range up to 40 miles in optimal conditions. And I've ridden a lot of scooters in my lifetime, and I've never had a scooter go the advertised range. Typically, most scooters I've ridden only provide about half of the advertised range. This is probably due more to my weight, not riding in perfectly level surfaces, and I never ride around the slowest speed setting. So what I did was a range test, where I took the scooter down to the Strand, which is a beautiful bike path that connects Imperial Beach with Coronado. I typically do range tests here, just because it's really wide open, it's separated from cars, and it's one of those beautiful places in San Diego. So on this test, I rode the scooter in the high speed setting, with my speed ranging between 14 and 23 miles per hour. The scooter provided a powerful, smooth ride, and after riding for about an hour and a half or so, I returned to my car and only had a small amount of battery left. And based on the mileage and the battery left over, I determined the scooter would have gone between 24 and 25 miles on this particular route, which I felt is really good considering that I wasn't riding around slowly and I was using the highest power level. So the Richter S9 has a clean, simple frame design that's made of alloy and has a well-made premium feel. And so far through my extensive testing, the S9 has held up extremely well to daily use. The 500 watt motor is also silent and provides very good acceleration and is very smooth. Once unlocked, it's able to cruise around 23 miles an hour easily and it's pretty comfortable. But it starts to run out of steam after that it takes a little longer to get to 25 miles an hour. The one thing I really noticed was how good the ride is. With the combination of 10 inch pneumatic tires, front suspension, and rear suspension, this scooter feels very smooth and handles bumps and cracks in the road with ease. I weigh about 175 pounds, and the S9 had no issues getting up to speed and climbing regular hills. And while I wasn't doing top speed on the steeper hills in my neighborhood, I was still able to climb the hills around 16 to 17 miles per hour. And so far in all my testing, this scooter has averaged between 21 and 26 miles of range per charge, which pleasantly surprised me. So I feel that realistically, 35 miles might be possible if you're much lighter than me and you're riding in optimal conditions. And the other thing this scooter does exceptionally is the braking. The brakes are super strong, and more importantly, they're very stable under braking. And while I really do like this scooter, it's not perfect, and this is due mainly to the app. The app isn't a horrible app. When I first got this scooter, it was not available in the Apple Store, saying that it wasn't available in my region and country. But in all fairness, I did contact Richter about it, and they fixed this within a few days. And the last thing is the cruise control, which can only be activated through the app. I wish there was a workaround where I could turn on the cruise control from the display instead of having to open up the app itself. But when it comes to the actual performance of the scooter, I don't have any complaints. So in conclusion, this is one of the highest quality sub-1000 scooters that I've ever ridden. And I'm very impressed with it. It has a ton of features, it looks good, it's very powerful, has amazing brakes, it's just a really fun scooter to ride. So hats off to Richter for designing a really nice scooter, I look forward to what other scooters and products that they bring to the market in the future. But if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great one.